Yeah, no, it was the first thing I've seen when I... Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Are you alright? I just wanted to see your reaction when I blatantly started an intro over you. <laughs> but I couldn't get... I couldn't get through it. <laughs> I was uh, going to start the intro while you were talking. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are we, lads? Are you well? Welcome. All right, Jacksepticeye, calm down now. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, guys, do we know that, like, Welcome let's to, tell the story, know. Mac, yeah? What's the story now? You versus Jacksepticeye. <laughs> <laughs> Back when uh, Mac was a big no, YouTuber. No, no, no I, I was a big YouTuber. The when you were big into YouTube, I meant. Oh like. yeah, when I was big into YouTube, yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, there's been swearing already. No, we, we, we'll leave this where it is, okay? <laughs> Alright guys, if you get a million likes, we'll tell the story of Mac versus Jacksepticeye, right? <laughs> basically, <laughs> Mac, basically, Mac called Jacksepticeye a complete and utter fraud and his little Twitter army came after him, alright? It is what it is. Yeah, um... Go crack. And it's funny now to see him like speak so normally in every video. I know, he's like, just he did what he did what he said. I, I was right, like I you was... were right all along. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but we're actually here to talk about games. Are we? Yeah, we're here to talk about games. All the games we played in February. Well, it doesn't mm. have to have been played. All the games I played in February, you might not have played them in February, because I'm playing a lot of old games, classic games. But mm. I'm playing quite a few new games as well. I, I literally have like maybe 13, 14 games that I've played in February. So we're going to talk about that and all the games you're playing as well. You gave me a list of some of the games you're playing. We'll go through them. So we'll start with um, a couple of games I completed. I've completed three games in February. So I need to get better at completing my games. Like I have quite a few that I still need to complete. That's not um, bad for February, man. Because like literally from your video... Like previously, you were talking about for like 2023. You completed 22. So, you know, you're on a good roll. That's true. Yeah. Just yeah, for one yeah, month yeah. alone, three like yeah. yeah. And I'm actually at the, I'm near the end of like maybe four or five games. So I, I just need to actually okay. get them done. Um, but the first one we're going to talk about is Dishonored. Um, have you played Dishonored in the past? Yeah, long time back. Yeah, I think I, I didn't play it upon release. Um, I think I maybe waited a year or two, then I delved into it. I didn't really like it at first. That's the was, exact same thing that happened to me. Yeah, yeah. I was pure crap at um, stealth games. Oh, and sure. If anyone's seen any of the old stealth <laughs> game videos we used to do in the past, <laughs> Assassin's <laughs> Creed, all these don't, different don't. videos we used to do together, probably some of the worst stealth you'll ever see on YouTube. If you respect Turlock's gaming skills now, <laughs> just... Do don't, yourself a favor. Don't go back. It's, yeah, don't go fine. back and watch those. Yeah. Yeah. What was another one? Dying Light. Was that stealthy kind of? Uh, there was, was a few more. I think. Yeah, to it. No, there was like what Sniper Elite. Um, Sniper Elite. Yeah. <laughs> that was horrendous. Oh, uh, <laughs> if if it wasn't one of us, like uh, if it wasn't one, it was the other getting caught. Like it was just an amalgamation no, of terrible stuff. One of us stealth. having like a really terrible moment of like. I just really want to shoot that red barrel right beside that tank or something. And then mainly oh, you. No, no, never mind. You, I, I don't. You're nah, terrible nah. for that stuff, man. No. You just get stuff in your brain and you can't not do it. Like. <laughs> oh, I, God. Yeah, I suppose. No, once I have a, a notion, I'm like, no, I have to follow through on this. I can't. Yeah. I can't just leave it. No. But, sorry. Continue on. Yeah. Dishonored. Yeah, basically, I was going to say anyway, I kind of did the same thing where I, it wasn't that launch either, but quite a bit after I played it and I really couldn't get into it, didn't like it. Um, but I keep hearing such good things from people that who have similar tastes to me in games as well and stuff like that. So I decided I'd give it another shot. I played it on Steam Deck, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And I went back and I really ended up enjoying it. Definitely has like fun stealth where... Even if you do end up getting caught, and based off our skills, I, I did get caught a lot. Um, the gameplay was still fun, like kind of having the the bow and arrow or the crossbow rather, and the and the gun, yeah. and then just slashing their heads off. It was it was really fun. Even being bad at stealth games, I still really enjoyed this game, and it makes you feel really good when you do get the stealth right as well. I think it's all part of the the creation of the game, like the what they had in mind, because it's all about 
like planning ahead strategy and stuff like that because i always have like a backup in my head of where to go if there is like because i know full well the stealth would only last for about four minutes if shit goes down (laughs) if if i can make it over here i'm good you know like i can retry or restart or whatever like uh, yeah but no it's just the the vision that they had it they've made such a like a perfect little game and for how old it is it still like it holds up today even the the art style of it still you can't knock it yeah, no, I think I started playing it on Steam Deck last year sometime, but I kind of really got into it and ended up completing it um, just uh, a few, maybe a week ago or something like that. I ended up completing it. Yeah, but, yeah, really Was enjoyed it. it. I think, on the Steam Deck? Or? No, it's, it, it runs perfectly, plays perfectly on the Steam Deck. I don't and you, you don't find it that. weird with the, the thumbsticks? Like they're, they're, I actually, I've, or it's, I suppose it's not thumbsticks, is it? It's like the little pads. No, it's the analog. They have analog. It's analog. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. I've yeah. yet to order one, and I can't wait to like do a backlog of all these games. Like Steam Deck you OLED, know. you should get that one. I'm I'm yeah. tempted, but I already have the original Steam Deck, so I'm not going to do it. You can always sell it off, but yeah, I know yeah. what you mean. I'll like, sell you my Steam Deck and buy the Steam Deck OLED. That that sounds perfect, even though you've just recommended <laughs> the OLED to me. But <laughs> that's true. <laughs> no, no, there's loads of little games I want to just test out on it, but I, I just have to be patient, you know. Yeah, there's it's a fun. few games I'm going to talk about that I've played on the Steam Deck throughout this list but um i think i'm gonna try dishonored 2 i don't know that i'll get to it soon but have you played dishonored 2 as well yeah yeah you yeah. completed unreal. that too unreal yeah. better or worse what, than the first uh well i loved isn't it corvo is the is it corvo yeah corvo the, yeah. yeah yeah like i loved his character um uh-huh. but i don't know i really enjoyed the kind of vibe from the whole cityscape in two and you get to like, choose your character in two, don't you? And you get to choose as well. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think I didn't choose for Corvo. I, I went for his daughter just to see how it would play out. Okay. I have yet to go back and try his style of of like uh, abilities and stuff like that and see where his story leads. But I don't think it's much in the way of different. Like, I think it kind of it goes doesn't change the, the story or anything path. too much. Not a whole lot. It's just certain things happen to one character where it doesn't to the other, and it's just inverse. Spoilers. For- I I'm just saying that's not a spoiler. I was actually very careful there, right? No, nah, no, nah, I'm just joking. Um, another one that I played and completed in February. I actually started it January. I got a review code and I completed it at the start of February. Is uh, Banishers: Ghosts of New Eden? Um, yeah, it got, it kind of got a lot of chatter about being like this kind of double A game that a lot of people want, mm. and there's a lot of great stuff in this game definitely i i did a full review on it so i'm not going to talk uh, about it too much but um i really enjoyed the cases and the haunting cases and stuff like that basically there's certain Spoiler. cases where there will be a character that's haunted and you have to um banish the ghost or you can choose to sacrifice the human there's like a cool element with that and it'll play into the overall story as well without spoiling it too much you have to basically like ascend your wife or resurrect her and the decisions that you make in each case um kind of leads towards a decision on that and it's uh it's really cool Mm. you have you been thinking about playing this game or looked into it at all? yeah only for the fact that i think was a jake baldino um or there was maybe it was a different guy that was talking about it recently but what they were saying it was very similar to vampire or vampire however you want to pronounce it um but like like that game that you're talking about, Banishers, like it's it's got those elements in it where it's like you can. I think it's I oh can't. It's so long ago. But basically, you you either develop your vampire side or you don't. You save the. Humans. I think I know. Yeah, I think I actually played like the first hour of that game and I didn't get into yeah. it fully. But I got yeah. into. I'd say maybe like seven or eight hours into the game and i was really vibing with it. But I think my PC ended up kind of like crashing and wiped my progress. Oh, so that's always tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that um the anime kind of base game you were on about. You know how you kept wiping well you were you did it deliberately. Oh on I, no, accident. I, did, I did it by accident. On, on yeah. accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was through your own fault. Like my fucking PC just like said Yeah, no, no yeah. What was yeah, that game called again? Bloody Eden, no. Uh no. Fucking What is it called? Oh, it's kind shit, of like, that's gonna it's bug like an me. Atlas game or a Persona game. Maybe. It's it's similar, yeah, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I know the one you're talking about anyway, but yeah, that mm. that shit annoyed the hell out of me. But um, but yeah, Banishers overall, I enjoyed mm. it. I think that 
that one of the main characters is really, really unlikable, and that kind of destroyed my enjoyment of the game towards the end specifically. She, the wife, is just insufferable towards the end. I'm like, I, I almost just want to say, yeah, you're dead to me, and let's banish her. If that was an option, I would have banished her. But uh, I don't want to get too far into that now. But um, if you, yeah, well, are you going to play this really or not? Like, irritating where she's like, can you please bring me back? No, yeah, nothing like that. Right. It was actually just yeah. like she'd kind of comment on each case and she'd be like, oh, these guys are annoying me. And like, uh, she was just annoying the way she was talking. I was, was bugging me so much. <laughs> so fucking just emo going, you fucking piss me on the door. Yeah, honestly, it was yeah. like that towards the end and she was just insufferable. But yeah, yeah like I, I think I'll pick it up, but I, I kind of want to wait for the price drop. Like there's a few really like amazing games coming out in the next couple of months oh, yeah. or DLCs. So I'm kind of focusing on them first Fair before enough. I delve into it. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, it's a busy uh, a busy few months for sure. All right, next game. Mm. This is the third and final game I completed, and I just completed this a, a few days ago. Tomb Raider Remastered, the classic mm. one, the remastered version of the one from 1996, I believe. Um, yeah, it makes game, me feel old. Yeah, this, but, yeah I, I was two when it came out, so... <laughs> I didn't really get a chance to play it back then but I'm really glad I went back and played this because I wouldn't have thought it would be a game that I would have enjoyed I would have thought it would be a little too dated but I went in and I'm, I am just had an absolute blast with it to be honest it's so much fun it's like it's a proper old school game in the terms of like the platforming is incredibly difficult it's really challenging um, but it's so satisfying like when I first started playing the game I was like after an hour or two I was like I don't know if I can do this like you'd lose so much progress when you died um basically there's no saves unless you manually save it so i as a noob into the tomb raider series i was not saving the game at all so when i died i'd lose like 30 minutes of progress uh, and i would be so annoyed but then like the comments came out and they saved me like the tips and tricks i got in the comments honestly like just up my enjoyment of the game so much more i'd save before any big jump now like if there's a jump where there's yeah, a yeah, slight yeah. possibility of me dying i'm like i'm saving it here i think by the end of tomb raider i had nearly 220 saves or something like that um oh wow yeah i think i already have like 60 in tomb raider 2 after an hour and a half so <laughs> like, you're yeah. being super cautious but I just want to say as well, that's what happens when people engage with the videos. They help people, you know, yeah. like Turlock, the poor soul didn't know about this mm -hmm. and you've, you've helped them enjoy the game thoroughly. So exactly. Engagement is king. Have you played <laughs> these games? At all? Um, I no, like I, I played the classics, but it was only for like maybe a half an hour here and there. Like my sister. When you were younger, like, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She'd have like Tomb Raider. I think she had one and three maybe but um yeah they're incredibly hard i think i just stayed in the mansion the whole time and i thought i was playing the game and <laughs> <laughs> my sister was like yeah good job you know like i was only fucking tiny when i was playing it but, <laughs> like looking back like i wish i kind of like delved into those a little bit more or the kind of ps2 kind of classic ones you know oh, the, the underworld trilogy is it underworld yes yeah i haven't yeah. played those either yeah I have bought one recently for like 99 cent on Steam. So um, oh, I highly I recommend you get the re remasters though. Remaster, I think it's yeah. 30 bucks for the three games. Yeah, it's not it's bad. either 20 or 30. I've changed the controls slightly where it's more like they not... have two options. Okay. So there's okay. modern controls, there's tank controls. I I started Tomb Raider 1 on modern controls and I have stuck with them. A lot of people were trying to tell me to switch to tank controls, but I kind of wanted a new perspective on it as well for people that haven't um, maybe seen Test the modern out. controls. And, yeah, and yeah. like, it, there is a lot of stuff where it's like it would be easier on tank controls, but I think just the general movement, walking around the place, I cannot do it on tank. It like drives me into a a fit of rage even just walking around the map on tank. Like I just can't do it to myself. So. I, I think modern has really improved certain areas of, of, of that, but the game was definitely d designed around the tank controls where you're kind of, you're playing the game in blocks where like you can't actually jump until you've taken two steps on, on a block basically. And it's just, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's a really, really fun game. 
it's tough, as I said. My biggest problem with it on modern controls is the camera angles. Like when you're in a tight space, the camera angle will switch. And if you're moving one direction, the camera angle switches. You, it starts moving you in a different direction immediately. Even if yeah, you're I moving know. it in the same direction. And I actually, you can't see anything either. Like it'll put the camera angle up in a corner where I can see maybe the top of Lara's stupid head or just her ankle or something like Like it's stupid. Like the camera angle is definitely... Uh, is the They're worst part about playing on modern. Yeah, no, yeah. that is the worst part. But I think overall, I've I've got used to it definitely, and I've I've mm. got quite good now at modern controls. I would even say, um, like the, you look at the gameplay from my part one of Tomb Raider Remastered compared to what I'm like now. I think there's yeah. like a, a huge difference, and that's just from playing the first game and that's Tomb Raider Two already. One, yeah. I played. I think actually now I've played three hours I of Tomb Raider Two, and it's so much more difficult. There's a lot New more going on this Tuesday. Today. Oh, well, today. No. Maybe not well, if this video. If this video goes up today, it's today. If not, I, I doubt it will. I doubt it will. But <laughs> we'll see what happens. Especially we'll see if you're fucking editing it. It's going to take hey. a little life. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, man. Is that, it doesn't need much editing. It's just two boys chatting about games. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's you, the cricket, bro. <laughs> That's uh, All right. That means we're done with talking about Tomb Raider, all right? Let's talk about a, a game know, that you've been I, I playing. I do have a question, I okay. suppose, pertaining Anyways. to those. I know the last, well, the very first one that you mentioned, Dishonored, that's, uh, it's an older title, so I will exclude it. But Banishers and Tomb Raider, what would you recommend for someone who only had, well, Banishers is probably, like, with being a double A title, only maybe 40, 50 quid, or is it a full price title? I actually don't know the, I, I, I think it might be a full price title. I think it is, but I could be wrong. If it, yeah, I, I'd say it's probably short of what, like most triple A's are trying I'm going to look that up, actually. I'm going to look that yeah. up. But continue asking your question. But yeah, uh, question-wise would be like, so that that's one of the most recent titles to come out. They're two of the most recent titles. What would you recommend for someone who only had, say, 50 quid to pick up? Well, that actually is a good question because Banishers is exactly 50 quid. It's $50 so okay. um, on Steam. So I assume it's 50 euro here as well. So Or maybe hmm. 40. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe or something. Yeah. Who knows what the okay, way? No, the, maybe it's less. Actually, yeah, I just I never follow the currency. I know. <laughs> Who knows? We usually but get yeah. games much more expensive over here in Ireland, basically. Yeah. Um, but I would say it, it depends on what you're looking for now, because they're two completely different type of games. But if you're yeah. looking for like that old school kind of nostalgia, nostalgia feel, I think Tomb Raider is phenomenal. It really is great, and there's three games there for the price of of less than one game. Um, mm -hmm. and they have a lot of content and I, I think that overall I would recommend them if you're not looking for a hard experience though like <laughs> stay away I yeah. would say Banishers is definitely much more appealing to a to a casual gamer and not to say it's a casual game or anything it's quite in depth um, as well I think I put like 25 hours into Banishers and had only discovered like 15% of the open world so there's there's quite a lot okay. of content there as well for for a for a double a game um but yeah i i think both are good options me personally i prefer tomb raider um okay. but i still have two games to play in that series no that's the brilliant answer no it's just um because it's just it's so hard nowadays with the cost of living and stuff like that like you know when you only have a few euro you're like you're trying to make your mind up on certain things i'd love more people's perspectives on games like because yeah. i feel like a lot of the review sites are kind of they're, they're all one-sided nowadays um and i kind of just tend to ignore them like i like only the youtube few, reviewers uh, now like like skill yeah. up and and stuff Skill like up that. And stuff. yeah 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 those are who i follow now to get like good uh good opinions on games definitely good honest really think... opinions yeah, yeah exactly but no. um no but it's, it's just nice to see studios actually offering games for these kind of prices even though yeah, we need more of this kind of, thing, yeah. of work or less, well maybe tomb raiders might be less but i don't i don't know well yeah it's a remaster yeah. of course yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a remaster but, yeah yeah but I'm sure yeah. there's a lot they had to tune. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of the controls have been changed and stuff like that. I don't know if they were changed already or what, but um, anyway, let's talk about a game you're playing. You bring up uh, a game you want to talk about and uh, we can discuss uh, it. Well, I won't bother with it. Uh, I was going to start off with Baldur's Gate, but it's it's an older game at this point. But it's Baldur's just, Gate 3. It, yeah. Baldur's yeah, Gate no, 3. start with that if you want. Yeah. Well, I've just... I keep dropping it and picking it up 
in the not in the way that I'm fed up of it. It's just I like to take kind of like miniature kind of breaks. It could be a week to maybe two or three, depending on how busy I am. That game is a I'll, lot, though. It is. Yeah, there's an awful lot. And I have been trying to see every corner of the map. Um, and it's nearly too much. I feel like I want to just progress on with the story, but I feel like I'm betraying all the work that the studio, Larian <laughs> Studios, have done. Um, and I, I don't like skipping over any dialogue or anything like that. So it's just, it's such a time sink. But I don't know. It's just, it's one of those games that make you feel so good about the money that you spent on it. If you get me, because that was like 79 quid, I think, for us, 70, 79 euros. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, and I feel so happy about my purchase and like just all the content that it gives you. Like, I'm only in Act 2, and I'm only away from the inn maybe about two hours now. But it's, uh, yeah, it's been a delight. It's I, You just can't go wrong with that game. And, like, if you ever see it on discount, snap it up. You won't regret it. I don't think anyone who has, like, a distaste towards on any of those RPGs, they should just kind of throw that thought out the window and just try it at least. I don't know if there's a demo or a trial. No, I don't think so. No. They really should think about that, you know, like to try and get all the, these kind of like, say, football or NFL kind of heads, FIFA kind of people that are like they'll <laughs> never touch those kind of games. That's <laughs> true. I'm looking at you, Turla. Um, hey, no, I but play you, it. you love those kind of games. <laughs> I know, but you you've dabbled in like World of Warcraft and all that. Well, I say dabbled. I used to have dabbled. I played about. <laughs> Understand. I put a disgusting years. amount of hours into World of Warcraft when I was younger. But yeah, Baldur's Gate three. I. Mm. I think I'm pretty much at the same point as you in in Act Two. Uh, I haven't played it in months now, like absolute yeah. months. Like I got stuck and I kind of rage quit. I want to get back to it. I really do, <laughs> but I. What the fuck's this man doing? <laughs> I'm opening the fucking. There's a sliding door here, man. It's oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> no swing house. Even though it's it's absolutely hammering down, and then it's bright for like five seconds, and then the heat just goes. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah. You're, no, the, as you're I was roughly saying, in the same point. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I rage quit. I've mentioned this in my videos before, and you, you probably saw it at the end of a video. But I basically got stuck at that part in the in the boss fight where he comes down and like there's this big boss fight in that inn. I and I yeah, yeah. finally beat the boss, but I was doing an AoE attack on him. So as yeah. the fight ended, my AoE attack started attacking everyone else in the village. So they all started attacking me and killed me, and I didn't have any saves at all. I was making the mistake, same mistake I was making with Tomb Raider, where I was not saving the game at all. Um, and then I kind of, I realized throughout a lot of pain that you have to be like quick saving it all the time. Yeah, but there there is a bit of a kind of part of the community that is against that. Against um, the quick, yeah, it, I get that. Yeah, save, save, scumming. save scumming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a weird idea, like, but. I don't know. There, you make so many like easily <laughs> easy mistakes. Like you might throw a fireball or something like, and it just triggers a chain of events that you cannot stop. And it's like, you'll have a whole race against you or that. Yeah. Like that. The town is going to be out to kill you. It's oh, that's so easily I'm, done. Yeah. That's the reason I'm completely for saves coming. I don't care. I don't care. Like, if some bullshit like that is going to happen to me, I'm reloading. Yeah. I don't care. Like, I'm not letting that ruin my experience. Because that's the kind of yeah. thing that will make me not want to play the game ever again. And, like, yeah. rage quit. Like, that is what happened to me. I just don't have the patience for that kind of thing. But I do want to get back to it. I have it downloaded on my Steam Deck. And um, I, I want to get back into it at some point, definitely, and continue on where I left off. Because... I mean, I, the combat is never really something that I've been super into. These turn-based combats, like... Yeah. I feel like a game I'm going to talk about later, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, has completely different turn-based combat. This is like much more in-depth and extreme in Baldur's Gate 3. But the story and the dialogue is some of the best... Like, the dialogue is some of the best I've seen in video games. Like, the dialogue options, the yeah. dialogue tree. It's incredible. Definitely. The voice acting. Um, uh, like, just sharing that night with Shadowheart, you know? <laughs> I never got that. No, the very last thing that happened... What a loser! <laughs> Was no Shadowheart was asleep and uh, Lazelle. What did you do to her? Knife. No, no, Lazelle was over with the knife, ready to kill her. Uh, 
but like that, I was trying to like, you know, be diplomatic. I was trying to just make sure that it wouldn't escalate anymore. I was like, just, you know, drop the knife on all this. And um, I ended up making Lizelle go like, well, <laughs> if that's how you feel. And then a fight starts and I'm like, no, reload, reload. <laughs> yeah, sure no, enough. but no, the, the thing was, I think, yeah, she, she slit Shadow Heart's neck and... Yeah, that's. I was like, I'm not gonna lose two party members over like a really dumb decision. So, yeah, it, like just because. Yeah, I'd be reloading that <laughs> for yeah, sure. Yeah. No, that's the kind of thing that I love about the that. game too, though. Like that yeah. shit, like that can yeah. happen. And I was like, what the fuck did I do to this bitch? I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the actual dialogue and, and stuff reminds me a lot of Dragon Age, and yeah. Dragon Age I really love. But um, yeah, that's Baldur's Gate yeah. three. Definitely get Play Dragon it. if you're into Dragon RPGs. Gate play it for sure mm -hmm. and if you don't mind turn-based i think a, the turn-based combat will put a lot of people off but once you actually get into it super in-depth it's quite fun but it is difficult and it's not a game that is going to be super easy to get into i feel but overall no. great game great game all right let's talk about hell divers matt because me and you have both been playing hell divers i think you've played quite a bit more than me i think i've played I maybe played any this morning and i'm kind of getting jonesy you know? <laughs> i thought you were gonna say i haven't played any at all i was like yes you have <laughs> no i played six to eight hours maybe you've played more like 30 i think <laughs> yeah i think i'm up in the 30 to 34 maybe our area now um nice it's i it was one of those games where i was actually kind of hyped for when i seen the trailer um closer to the time when i started seeing some of the gameplay i was like oh it looks a bit like tame a bit boring Compared to what I had seen in the trailer, and then I said, "I said, feck it, I'm gonna get it," because you guys were all gonna yeah. buy it. And um, I was delighted that I did because the first night, I think I sank five hours into it. I didn't co go into bed until about four in the morning. Um, <laughs> it is one of those I, games, though, where you could, you, yeah. you just have fun. Like it's so much, yeah. just pure fun, and that's what a lot of video games need to be more like that. Not every game needs to be like that, but there needs to be more like this game as well. Like yeah. the co-op, four-player co-op, just absolute chaos and fun where you can friendly fire, the, the accidental deaths that happen, the crazy stuff that happens as well, like where they set off my minefield as we're kind of extracting and going up. Remember that? Like my minefield got yeah. set off right at the end the, and stuff like that. Right. Like, yeah, it's just so much like, fun. We, we all, yeah, we had, we had a couple of games together, but like they were like some of the least random things that happen like i've played a load of games like in public matches and it's just it's so like unimaginably funny like yeah. unimaginably funny um the shit that happens like you know you, you'll hear a guy shouting out like be careful there's mines in front of you and then you know like takes half a step forward blown to bits uh and you know it's just it's just pure comedy. It's like Lethal Company in a way, where it's like, yeah, it's, you do get those vibes from more, it. Yeah, it's you get funny moments out of it like so easily, um, and it's just a blast. You, you just, I can't stop laughing when I'm playing online. I know, even the stuff like on the ship where like you're just having fun with the boys in voice chat, like the shit we were doing where we were just <laughs> running in place as you were AFK, like all running towards the end. Like I'll put that up on the AFK screen. I wasn't even AFK because I, I think I was... I, I think was you bugged out or something, yeah. I was bugging because I was there and I was like, what the fuck are these guys doing? And then I, I was like, oh. And then the moment I joined in, I think I had control of the character because you guys were all like, oh, it stopped. <laughs> yeah it was, it was just hilarious and and kind of the way you can just walk up and hug your partner or do the high fives i just love the the kind of community co-op aspect of it is is brilliant and i need to play more of it i haven't got a chance to play it recently at all and i definitely have been wanting to get back into it and and needing to play more and the success of this game definitely. is unbelievable like it's genuinely yeah. unbelievable the success of this game seeing the the numbers like playstation decided to release it on pc uh, day and date and i think that that has done the game the world of good in terms of like it's it's success story on launch because um the the devs can't keep up with how successful it is like the, with the servers they seem to have a better hold on it now yeah yeah, yeah. But, i'm fucking delighted for them like yeah it's, I, it's on uh like it's on another scale i didn't think it would get this level of popular i thought it was going to be one of those games we'd even be playing and it was just like it's just something we just hop on like it's 
I didn't think it would even get to like Rocket League or Fall Guys or any of those kind of levels of multiplayer greatness. Like, but it's definitely up there, and I'm so happy it is. Yeah, I'm the same way. I wasn't like super excited for this game or anything. I didn't like expect yeah. to be as invested in this game as I am. But I need to get back into it and see. the The interesting thing for me about this game is like, where is it going to go from here to keep people invested? Because like, it does mm-hmm. seem like they're at the moment. I don't know, like it could potentially get repetitive if you just keep doing these same missions. Yeah. Like they need to add in missions consistently, I feel like, in different enemy types, different mission structures and, and stuff like that, yeah. just to, to spice things up. I do think, though, that Sony and... What's the name of the studio, actually? I'm, I'm Arrowhead. Kind of, Arrowhead, yes. Sorry. Um, I think that this is the first line of live service games in their, like forward going forward kind of a plan i think they've already strategically thought of this like this morning i only found out about a guy named joel who is almost like a dungeon master for hell divers 2 so like i think in one of the excerpts there it says that he, he gets up in the middle of the night sometimes just to kind of give the the automatons more reinforcements like wow. he's one <laughs> aspect of it like a live service job like that is amazing okay. but then they have the likes of mechs vehicles they have more stratagems more weapons yeah this i heard mechs are coming that yeah, should be interesting yeah. Th- that should be soon as well i think it's in the first quarter or second quarter of this year but um yeah it's i i think they have it all road mapped out and i think there's even a third or fourth enemy type that could potentially come there's definitely and a third there's yeah. a lot of like opportunities there as well for yeah. for different collaborations they could do with other games like um the sacred symbols boys were talking about this and this was something that i had thought of as well is like crossover with kill zone yeah. resistance kill zone. Kill zone. Yeah. like imagine getting the locust in there imagine getting the hellgast in there as enemy types like that would be so cool and and people might think of that as gimmicky but i think that those yeah. kind of worlds would actually come together really yeah. naturally i feel like with with hell yeah. divers too and i, I, I think just think that would right be so fun skin, yeah no, and imagine getting the skin of the hell gas like just even if you could put the hell gas skin on your on your own guy like that would be i'd buy that shit immediately that, like yeah a, no that would be an instant buy for me as well like yeah, yeah. I, I like i hope that they don't go down that like chase and monetary kind of stuff because they've no not like a Fortnite level or something fire. but ones that make no, sense no. yeah 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 like they're they're great. not actually bad they're fairly great in the way of like using super credits like you can get them in game as long as you spend enough time playing you will okay. generate wealth in the game you know i didn't know that okay cool yeah and speaking of hell divers you've been playing the first one as well you said so yeah it's it's only briefly it's Tell maybe for it. two hours no it's I won't discuss it too much because I haven't played enough of it to justify talking about it. But mm-hmm. it's it was just it, I was loving Helldivers too so much. Realized that it was on the PS Plus um, catalog um, from years gone by. And um, I think I remember that actually. It's yeah. it's a weird. It's not like it's it's kind of top down, but it's not. Is that like an angle? Um, it's very much Helldivers. It's is it like a twin stick fight. shooter? Is that correct? It's no? kind of like that. Um, no, well, I'm using our like I'm not using the analog to shoot. Might be a different game I'm thinking of. It, yeah, I'm trying to think what you're thinking of. No, but um, yeah, I'm I'm actually gonna play a little bit more of that today just to to feel more of the game, feel it out a little bit. Cause I I it was a game that I wanted to give a little bit of love back in the day, but I just never bothered with. Um, and I just I felt like no, I need to try this out now, you know. So like you can I, definitely I feel Hell Divers yeah, too. Def- like comes it's definitely Hell Divers too, but it's not anywhere near as in depth. Like you're obviously yeah, yeah, of course. the movement's not going to be as insane. The stratagems and stuff as well, but I haven't gotten too far into it. Okay. And <laughs> maybe we'll talk about that if we do a March video. Mm. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But definitely. all right, moving on. Um, I'm going to talk about GTA Four. That's a game I'm playing at the moment. Um, I'm still playing through it. I'm not going to talk too in depth about it. I just think GTA Four is what the hell, man. <laughs> yeah. I think GTA Four is awesome. The mission structure I love. 
I love how you can kind of just go and do whatever mission you want at any time, and they're not too mm -hmm. long. Like they're the yeah. missions are generally always like fifteen to thirty minutes long, and they're just uh, the whole game is just a lot of fun. Like Nico is one hundred percent my favorite protagonist from the GTA series. Like he's so great. I love Nico. Just even the way his he laughs throughout the throughout the game. Like he's like I just love the way he talks to people and the way he, his humor as well just gets me. Um, he's incredible. I know Him it's and the accent, but he just reminds me of Borat. <laughs> yes. But even personality-wise, kind of like he's funny, but he's kind of dumb at the same time. He, he, but he's brave. Like he's he's, he's funny in a reserved way. Older, I don't know he? that I'd call him dumb. I think his cousin is more dumb. Roman is dumb. He's but... kind. Of, uh, yeah, I wouldn't call him f like outright dumb, but he doesn't like. Not all the neurons are firing, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of more like just all about the money, like getting the money, doing the work. Well, like he's surviving. Like he's, yeah. that's, that's what he's doing. Yeah, was he an ex-soldier or something like that? Or something like that, yeah. I can't remember now. That, that was a fantastic game back in the heyday. Like, yeah, I think I'm getting close to the end now. This is my first playthrough, but I never played it back in the day. Yeah. So um, yeah, the, the characters are, are really fun. Like in general, the characters... Um, are great like throughout the game like from the start yeah. there's these crazy mother truckers at the start like they are batshit mm. insane and the characters throughout the game are are just get stupider and stupider like bernie yeah. like bernie dude <laughs> oh do you remember bernie from gta 4 i the, think i do um, the kind of one no, that turns just, gay after yeah. his serbian friend who turns gay like, and he's just there, like there's oh someone else God, i'm thinking of though like it you're my savior, Nico. <laughs> like this, guy. it's just so funny, dude. That like that that shit's hilarious. It's pure it's, silliness, like. But yeah. I miss that kind of humor and stuff from games, you know. And Jacob, the um, the guy as well. I just can't even understand a word he's saying without the subtitle. He's like, "Wagwan, man, I don't know what you're doing, J that, Nico, Jacob. Nico, my man, the kind of uh, Jamaican guy." I'm gonna have to look up Jacob now. <laughs> yeah, he's the Jamaican guy. He's fucking hilarious in it, and then. You got Dimitri as the big bad villain, but you kind of have like these sections throughout the game as you're going Little through. Little Jacob, is it? Little Jacob, yeah. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you I have sections throughout the game where you're kind I, of. I kind of remember him. Fucking hell. Sorry, go on. No, no. I was just saying, like, you have sections throughout the game where you're kind of working with different people and you can kind of yeah. choose to work with these people for a while or you can go back and, and do missions with someone else i just love the way they do it i love the mcreary family the irish family represent yeah, yeah. um they're so great in the game and some of the decisions in the game actually are are really interesting as well where you kind of have to decide to kill one brother or another or kill yeah, playboy x or heavy into that. But i think that was kind of popular at the time it was like a, a lot of choice kind of style games yeah um, yeah but even I love the, the games side activities and all that kind of stuff was i thought they were great yeah go and play in pool with roman or taking yes. yeah, kate yeah. out on a date or or something like that like Dude, bringing people to shit, date like, spots and yeah, stuff yeah. yeah it's fun it's really fun uh, and it's yeah. a great game i really love gta 4 um mm -hmm. do you have any extra thoughts about gta 4 that you remember uh, from when you played it no i just remember being completely wowed by like I, I'm a sucker for graphics, but I, I love the gameplay in it. The the driving and everything was just top quality. The driving's like, great. Yeah, it's yeah. Really it's cool. hard to get used to at the very like first twenty minutes that you're playing, and then you realize, oh, this is like the actual weight of the car is factored yep. in. GTA Five doesn't feel like that. No, it's, it's nowhere near as close. Like it, but I don't know. It's just all the shadows, lighting. You know, when you're walking under the bridges. New just York City, man. Theory. Yeah, yeah. It was just what insane. do they call it in the game again? Uh, Liberty? No. Um, Liberty City, yeah. Is it Liberty City? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Liberty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah, trying good. to get over there in San Andreas after somebody told me a rumor about how you could, <laughs> you keep flying. I don't know if it was northeast or something. I, did you ever hear this? No. No. I used to love San no, Andreas, though. You fly like a certain direction on the compass and apparently like after six hours or something you land in liberty city or you'll be flying <laughs> over it yeah um, six hours I don't know how the to time, man. <laughs> no what i did was i tied like a rubber band to my controller <laughs> and let it fly off and i think I that's remember old school gaming that. yeah yeah that was the way to do it though <laughs> true. true 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 all right um 
You have started Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I am not yeah. going to play this because I have not played the remake or the original. I think I'm going to go back and play Final Fantasy VII, the original first, but let me know what your thoughts on Rebirth are. It seems fairly positive from everything I've seen so far. Yeah, there, there seems to be an awful lot kind of going on in the first, like, I think I'm only an hour, hour and a half into the game. I'm in Nibelheim. I won't say too much more about that. Just Nibelheim, story-wise. that's from God of War, no. bro. Nibelheim. Nibelheim. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. As soon as I, I, I heard it last night, I was like, I knew about the, the area, but I was just like, Nibelheim. I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no um, it kind of it starts off with a flashback sequence. There is, I think there's a demo out at the moment that you can play that whole segment. I never got the time to actually go I think that's this, the so. start of the game too, right? I heard. It's the start of the game, yeah. I think there's maybe one or two kind of cutscenes that aren't put in. Okay. I, I could be wrong. Um, just from a gameplay video that I've seen, but maybe they might have cut it out just for the, because it's a long ass time. Like I'm an hour into it and I still haven't f- finished the, the first chapter. I think it's about two hours. But... I had to just first off, like before you even start the game, if there's anybody out there that's playing it today or yesterday or whenever, just make sure you put it on performance mode because it is so choppy. The cutscenes are even insanely choppy. Every game needs to be on performance mode, man. It should be the new standard now. Like I used to say, oh, 60 frames per second doesn't matter, man. Like I was like, it's all about the cinematography kind of feel. 60 FPS is so much better, man. Yeah. Once you get used to it, you can't. It's hard. You can't to go come back. back. Yeah. No, no. It's the same with like Spider-Man games. As soon as I got Spider-Man Two, sixty frames. Mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen what one hundred and twenty looks like, and I'm sure that'll blow my mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I played one forty-four. I think on Fortnite on PC for a while, and it was it, like when I went back to console. I think I was yeah. PS4 at that time. I went back to console and it was 30 FPS. I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I can't play Fortnite on the console can't. ever again. But on PS5, no. it's not as bad because I think it's solid 60. Um, yeah. As long as I'm getting 60, I'm pretty happy, honestly. Like, 60 is, happy, is, yeah. is great. Um, but anyway, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Um, yeah, I'm guessing the I graphics just, uh, are insane. Yeah, no, like, uh, they're much the same as the previous game. Like, as there the is a lot more kind of detail going on in terms of, like, foliage and stuff that I've noticed so far. Maybe, like, I don't know, the, the kind of, like, rock faces, rock walls. Um, there isn't so much to talk about that way. The vistas are amazing so far from what I've seen as well. Um, gameplay, it's the same as the last one. If if you've played it, you know what you're, you're going to be picking up. Um, I bought the twin pack, actually, as well, because I had it on PS4. The, the the first one the remake. one the remake and i ended up trading it in to get the ps5 um along with a few other games but um yeah i bought the twin pack it's the exact same price if okay. if you haven't played it before it's a fantastic deal because you get the re- the ps5 version with it too but at some point okay. i will and that has like exclusive it. content too doesn't it the Luffy, what is it is luffy it? dlc or some shit i remember hearing colin talk about that on sacred symbols or yuffie is I, it yuffie I don't know. Yuffie, Yuffie, yes. Okay. Yeah, you completely threw me off there. I thought you were talking about One Piece for a second. <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I my first Final Fantasy game that I ever completed was last year. I completed Final Fantasy 16, loved it. So I think I'm going to go back, check out Final Fantasy 7. And if I like it, I'll check out the remake and then maybe eventually Rebirth. But I mean, there's so much content there that it could be years before I eventually get to Rebirth. But Man, seven's, 7 would take you a fucking age to finish. I think it's a long one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, all the content from these it's a three part, it's a trilogy that they're releasing so it's the yeah. original game it's all split from, up. yeah yeah, that's in- incredible and it's incredibly but, hard as well yeah okay good, mm. good news for me <laughs> maybe I won't play it <laughs> I don't know <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'll wait for Final Fantasy 17 but next up I'm going to yeah. talk about Suicide Squid, Squad Kill the Justice League brief, <laughs> oh, briefly Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squid <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah um, i mean this game has bombed there's no doubt about it it's bombed yeah um the steam numbers are like when you compare the steam numbers of suicide squad kill the justice league to hell divers it's like what the hell happened happened here rocksteady how did this game take you eight years to make um Nine, what went out like there had to be some crazy like they should have just made the superman game man they should have just made the superman game yeah uh, th- they could have no like to be fair it's a it's a cool idea i just think I, no i do agree yeah 
yeah, there's parts of it that I like. Do it well. That was all. You know, mm. like I this the main kind of issue I have with it is the fact that it's kind of like a live service game. Oh, one hundred percent. I think the characters are great. Um, I yeah. think the the gameplay is like at its core, the gameplay is fun. I just think yeah. the mission structure in the game sucks in the open world. Like in the yeah. open world, all of the missions are the same, man. They're all like it, it. Everything you're doing is the same. It's like it's like every mission you do is like some sort of fetch quest or go here, do that, do the same thing every time. And it's just it it's grating and it's boring. And the best yeah. part about this is the characters. Like I think the characters are actually really well done. I think seeing the Justice League like this, I don't have the same complaints as other people where it's like. I don't want to get into spoilers now where it's like you yeah, actually yeah. kill the Justice League because, I mean, of course you do. That's the whole premise of the game. Like, people were getting upset that you killed the Justice League and Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. But, I mean, I understand that people were upset at, like, the way it happened in, in certain parts. But I'm not going to get too deep into spoilers, yeah. as I said. But, yeah, the live service, as you said, ruins it. Like, I mean, you can tell that this is just designed to be a live service game and it takes away so much from the core of the game. Like... That's just yeah. the reality. From the it. very beginning, they knew that that's what it was going to be. Um, yeah. It's a shame. No, I, like, to be fair, I was humming and hawing about buying the game. I, I haven't yet, but I've seen a lot of gameplay. I watched your live stream uh, mm -hmm. when you first got it, when there was huge server issues. Like, first of all, that that's horseshit. That the fact that you can't play it in single player. Insane. Yeah. And he, like, I don't know if you got the code or if you bought it, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's like, you, you know, you're I bought the ultimate it. edition. Yeah. So you're what, three or four days early then you're supposed yeah, to, be able to, to, to get it three days early. And I think the first day and a half, I wasn't able to play it really at all. And I think even on the third day, there was still kind of issues where people were getting kicked. But no, it's just from what I've seen and from what I've heard a lot of people kind of talk about as well is the fact that you're kind of just dropped in the shit of it. Like you just obviously, you know, you're this is Suicide Squad's game, but there was no run up or explanation. There was no real talk about how Brainiac comes oh, in. Oh, the intro sucked too. They could have done yeah, such a the yeah, tutorial. Yeah. It was trash. Yeah. Yeah. Like they could have done I, I they could have actually used that to build the world. Nothing. Yeah. They didn't though. Yeah. I mean it sucked. Um but yeah, yeah. I mean Yeah, they could have even had someone over the comms, like Amanda Waller talking about how it happened what yeah. happened what led to this you know give a little bit more information i know there is kind of like those bios that you can read and i don't know if there's any kind of like historical logs anything like that but there like is some logs, many yeah. people know what or who brainiac is and what his powers are how powerful he is you know it's like i don't know like you could drop thanos into a spider-man game now and people would know what he's about but if you were to go and drop, drop, I don't know, just trying to think, like, Dr. Doom, I know he's not as powerful, but maybe he is for some people. But you know, like, you, you can't just throw a character at people and go, some shit happened, and not explain any of their power levels, if you get me. Yeah, it's, I got you, yeah. Like yeah, it's poorly done in that regard. You, you know he's a threat because he's taken out the Justice League, he's brainwashed them. But, I know. And, and when I was playing this game, like I was having a good time. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like, I'm enjoying the gameplay. I'm enjoying the characters, switching between them and having fun. But it's yeah. like, the more you marinate on it and kind of think about what's actually gone on here, it's like, this is rock steady. And they spent seven, eight years on this. Like yeah. we didn't get a game for them since 2015, I think Arkham Knight came out in, was it? And 2015 yeah i think 20 2015 yeah and this is this is what we get like that is i can't help but be bitterly disappointed at the end of it because i mean yeah. i was absolutely juiced when i heard rumors of like a superman game like i'm telling you man i was so excited for a superman game i think rocksteady could have knocked it out of the park with that but yeah and i do think that's probably what they wanted to do but I think the the whole live service aspect of this whole thing, may, but maybe this is what they wanted to do. And if they did, I think it's an error on their part that they wanted to do a live service game like this. Like there's I just, feel like they were probably pressured into it. I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's hard to know. Yeah. But I mean, it, it sucks really, that like, this is what has happened. The money you make off a story-based game is like the initial sales at full price. You're going to get a lot of, you know, 
final sales when there's when the game is worth a lot lot less like you could pick up arkham knight for probably a tenner or less now on mm. steam or playstation but it's they were i really think they were probably just chasing that cash cow yeah like i think because I think live service exactly it. it's hard it's hard to drop that kind of a game like it's only in the last two or three months maybe where i'd, I'd say actually november was the last time i really played destiny 2 like i've been playing destiny since it launched and yeah. it's so hard to drop those games and you feel so compelled to put that 10 euros i think it is or 11 euros for the seasonal pass because you're it's it's the whole fomo effect that you have you're you're gonna miss out on all this content so like why wouldn't you pay a tenner you know just to yeah. to see what it is for 90 days and you know, what does uh, what does Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League have mm. that would make people want to stay there and play it long term? It doesn't have that sticking point. It doesn't have that glue that will will keep people invested, I don't think. So I mean I'm two hours yeah. from the end and I haven't played the game in, in, in a week and a half or two weeks or something, maybe even longer, like two two and a half weeks or something like that. And I I don't have any desire to go back and play it again. Like I want to complete the game. I want to go back, yeah, yeah. And go, but I just like, every time I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I would rather play infinite wealth. I would rather play tomb Raider. There's so many games. I'd, I'd rather play hell divers like hell divers. Yeah. I think, um, the success story of hell divers compared to suicide squad kill the justice league is so interesting as well. Cause like suicide squad kill the justice league has so much more going for it right off the rip than hell divers two does. They have the licensing, they have, the the popular superhero characters there uh, in the game and it's like hell divers 2 has just blown them out of the water because it's actually a fun game and it actually yeah. has that level of like immersion and co-op and and fun like i don't think suicide squad killer justice league has that but enough harping yeah. on about that game i guess no like that was i was just literally just thinking there as you were saying that yeah fun is the aspect that they're definitely missing hmm. like it just it doesn't look fun to me enough to pick it up hell divers i seen as i was saying earlier on a really boring kind of basic video and i still thought it looked more fun than the yeah. likes of suicide squad yeah plus i don't think they have the mystery element to be able to go this is where the story is going to go as in like destiny it was just like i'm just saying that because it's one of the biggest games to just come out as a live service and continue oh, they've this done, yeah, they've done a great job up yeah, until they've, ran, they've ran the numbers, you know, like they, yeah. they've done amazing things with it. But it's just you had that over looming sense of mystery about what the traveler was, where did it come from, what is the darkness. It took years for us to get any kind of an answer, so it had that draw from players. You know, it's like DC is kind of laid out, there's only so many stories that they can come up with that feel fresh and actually yeah. interesting now. True. Like it's yeah, but I I could we could both say the same thing about the likes of Skull and Bones. Like <laughs> that's another game. Well, that well I let's talk about that game actually because you said that you have that on your list. So let's yeah. talk about Skull and Bones because I I haven't played it. I haven't had any desire whatsoever to play it. But I know you, Genie, Sofa have been playing it. Yeah. So I I'm I'm curious to hear about it. I really am because I I still don't know a lot about it. <laughs> okay, so. How much of it have you played, first off? Like, how, how many hours have you pumped into this game? I'd say maybe only two and a half hours. Okay. Two and a half hours. Okay. Right. Um, I'd say... So you're not on the level of Genie or anything yet? No, and I will never get that far because <laughs> I deleted it for space for Final Fantasy. Oh, you deleted it already. Okay. <laughs> well, Final Fantasy no, VII Rebirth but, is like 150 gigabytes, so you need to delete yeah, a yeah, lot. It's, I needed to get rid of quite a lot. But no, yeah. if if Genie was like, oh, do you fancy hopping on? Uh, the man did um, give me and Chris a code to actually go and play, um, or Sofa, should I say. Um, no, like I played about an hour in the beta, I was like, ah, I see the potential. Like, there's some things to kind of do. Like, I never got too far into it. I didn't have much time that weekend. I had the kids coming over. So um, I just, I kind of dropped it there. And I said, you know, what? like, I'll, I'll see about getting it maybe done in, when it's a bit cheaper. And then uh, Jeannie came to me and said that he has these codes. So downloaded it. We played that about an hour and a half together. They were miles ahead of me. They just pumped like, especially genie he had pumped so many 
yeah into he's, the he, he's, he's a platinum hunter like yeah he's, yeah he's always after that kind of stuff um yeah like it was fun to play with mates there was i think we did some kind of like a raid uh, i couldn't tell you too much about it in that respect because i hadn't played all these activities to go and top off the top of my head to be like this is exactly what it is this but yeah. it, de- it definitely was a raid of some sort we were at like a bay um i was completely under leveled that's that's on me i was going into activities with these guys it was a bit of crack like but i don't know it's, like when it's you not see... worth the 10-year development cycle basically in the 70 it's not a quadruple a game as eves gilmont would say no it's a quintuple a game we are just not we're not seeing the vision you know? <laughs> it's a five <laughs> five a game it's a quintuple a game and um, yeah i wouldn't know because the fact is it just felt like black flag except you're in the boat the whole time there is elements where you get to get off on shore you're on land but you walk so stiff and there's no like fighting off the boat is there no not nothing that i've seen yet i don't think there is imagine making a pirate game where you don't fight at all in first person or in third but like it's only the ship that's, combat that's crazy that's what bugs me even if it was just something as simple as like when you're know, boarding uh, you get on and have a little duel or yeah something. yeah you know a I mean? quick like, duel um or maybe even like holding up shops like you know to try and rob them um it just doesn't feel like an actual pirate game it feels more like a sailing game hmm. with the ship battle elements that feel very lackluster and I never felt like Assassin's Creed Black Flag's ship combat was good enough to say, hey, let's go and make a game out of this. Like, no, I, no. like it was, I didn't even, to it be honest, I know people like it, but I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, no. did, I never even really liked it that much, to be honest. No, Like, that was my least favorite fair. part of, of the Assassin's Creed franchise was the sailing yeah. in the fucking boat. And doing, I didn't really like it, but I mean, Three, yeah, I, I didn't I like know. for that reason, but I thought they improved so much with four, like, just fair enough yeah. like the sailing at sea was my favorite I, like i like i don't like sailing in real life as in like i don't have it that's not a hobby of mine um but in games it's one of my favorite things to do like uh, legend of zelda wind waker probably like my favorite game of all time top one um it's just i don't know like they nailed that feeling that i got when i played that game as a child like it was and it was just so beautiful. And then the, the ship combat where you're able to like engage with the enemies, you're hopping on the ship, you're you're actually taking it over, you're doing what a pirate does. I I just I couldn't understand why that wasn't a part of Gull and Bones. Like hold on. No, I'm muted. I'm muted. I'm muted. I was muted. My Sorry. Bad. Um <laughs> What I was saying there is like, and the fact that they just took so long to make it, like it was 10 years after, like nobody cares anymore, you know, like it's like they took too long to bring this game out and it didn't really, it didn't have the the look of a game that had been in development for 10 years, really. No, like it crazy. looks like a, a PlayStation 3 going into PS4 kind of era. You know, the that animations time, of it, yeah. It's the animations, really and I, really I swear, weird. like the, the photo mode is where it pops if you like taking photos mm-hmm. in games um but it's still when you're playing it the rendering i don't think it keeps up with it um Fair i enough. don't know it's very colorful like it's it's maybe a great exploration game if you're if you're enjoying that kind of stuff but i get that itch to go and attack it's, not, it's not as good as sea of thieves but, or anything like that <laughs> no no sea of thieves i oh think sea of thieves God. does it so much better with the exploration and the kind of actually getting onto land and doing yeah. stuff when you're off the boat kind of but yeah it's just it's lacking the story element uh, i suppose they have added in quite a lot of story content into sea of thieves but it's not going to be on par with the likes of Bell and bones but if you had the money spare and you were deciding on a game ignore skull and bones pick up sea of thieves because that's dropped on ps is it dropping on ps5 soon soon or i think in april yeah. march, PS4, march april. April. well worth it yeah. i had so much fun on the xbox playing that game yeah and it, they've done a lot to it to improve it as well. But I'll be right back. Yeah. I need to take a piss really bad. Right. Right. Sticking with the, the sea theme, I am playing Dave the Diver. Another game I'm playing on Steam Deck, actually. Uh, have you played Dave the Diver? 
No, it's one I want to pick up really bad. Did, did it just come to PlayStation it. or it's coming to PlayStation soon, is it? I think it's coming to PlayStation. Yeah, I don't think it's quite there yet. Oh, it's great, man. I, I, I've played maybe six, seven hours of it now. It, it's hard to explain why I like the game. Like, it, there's nothing there where you kind of explain it and goes, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. But it's like, it's just, you go into the ocean, you're this fat man. It's kind of like, it's not a super flashy, pretty <laughs> game or anything. It's a cool art style. Yeah. You're a fat man. You go into the ocean. You catch you catch fish, all different type of fish. Like, you can use Ooh. guns to kill bigger fish, but you can use your just your harpoon to catch normal sized fish and and as you go you start to kind of get tasked with getting rarer fish or going deeper down into the ocean to get stuff um and, and that is where you come across a lot of these rare fish and then that's during the day at nighttime then in the evening you go over to this restaurant and it kind of mm. turns into this little overcooked mini game where you have to serve people beer and the serve people food caught, from uh, the fish yeah. that you caught. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, yeah. um, so, and your performance there will affect the reviews of the of the restaurant, and kind of eventually you'll be hiring staff there as well who can help you out because it gets a little bit overwhelming with how quickly you need to get stuff to people. So um, it's when, a restaurant it, simulator as well as a diving kind of game. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like overcooked game. mixed with this little kind of underwater fishing game. And it just has, it has a lot of charm involved with the game. And mm. I, I don't know how much more I can really say about the game other than I, I think you should definitely give it a try because it's a game that it's kind of addicting that mode specifically where you're kind of doing the overcooked style thing in the restaurant yeah. is just like in theory you're like i mean i'm giving people drinks i'm i'm serving them food it doesn't really sound that interesting but you're kind of managing your stamina to get it to them as the fat yeah. as the fat guy you run out of stamina super quickly but oh. you try and you're trying to get it to them in time <laughs> and their happiness uh, is dependent on how quickly you get it to them like if they, they okay. if you don't get it to them in time they'll walk up and leave and they'll leave like yeah. a bad review or it'll kind of ruin the image of the company a little bit. But I mean, overall, having a blast with the game and it, they don't really hold your hand either. There's kind of when you go underwater, you have a specific task, but they don't tell you exactly where to go. Generally, like the the more you go on, the deeper down you have to go. And, and there's kind of these cool archaeology archaeology finds as well as you get deeper down into the ocean and you're tasked with some stuff like that and just now as i was playing um a couple nights ago this kind of group of people who are against fishing and like against harming the ocean heard my explosion down at the bottom of the ocean they come up and they're like hey man we're not cool with this uh with this stuff under the ocean or whatever like it's just it's just got a lot of charm it's funny it's cool and if you haven't played it yet um, I recommend checking it out. If you're only playing on PlayStation, it's coming to PlayStation soon. So give it a shot when it comes there. Um, Mac, it sounds that goes a for lot you more too. in depth than I actually anticipated as well. It is your, quite in depth. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. for a game that's not out there in terms of price, like it's it, it sounds quite cool. Yeah, and they're doing these fun collaborations as well. They're doing a collaboration cool. with Dredge, which I absolutely love. Dredge, great game. So that DLC, I definitely want to play that. And also they're doing a collaboration with Godzilla of all things soon as well. So there's Godzilla DLC coming to Dave the Diver soon. Um, and I think that will actually be coming out with the launch version oh, of the PlayStation cool. one as well. So that should be interesting. All right. Next game, uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Uh, this game is incredible. I mean, mm. if you haven't played the Yakuza games, do yourself a bloody favor and play them. All right. This new wave of, of Like a Dragon games is different. But the old, yeah. the old Yakuza games are just so good. The Yakuza 0, that's where you start. If you're wondering, where do I start? I don't know where to start. Yakuza 0 is the one you start with. An absolutely yeah. masterful story from start to finish. An incredible experience. Play with the Japanese voices for the love of God. And um, <laughs> and play with subtitles yeah. on. And, it, and it's just an incredible experience. Kiryu has become one of my favorite protagonists in the history of gaming and Majima it's and Yakuza Zero as well. It's yeah, like how many the, of the Yakuza games every, have you played? Uh, zero, one, two, Kiwamis. Uh, I think I have to play three, and I'm nearly sure four, but I've played five and six. And I've played part of the Like a Dragon uh, game, the, the very first one. Yeah. 
Uh, but I haven't touched two yet. I never really got into the combat style of the new Yakuza games because I love. You need to give it a shot. You need to. Thing. You need to stick with it. Yeah, I, I think I'll go back again because I think it's still on the Game Pass. So I think I'll I'll give it another go. It's worth Do. trying, like, because I I love the stories from the previous games. And like, the story in Like a Dragon, the one that you're playing, um, the one that you mm. haven't finished, is is incredible as well as time goes on. It's absolutely incredible. Okay. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I think I maybe I was maybe about three hours in and I just I couldn't hack. I, I could have been longer now to be fair, but I just couldn't hack the combat. But no, but once you get used then, to the combat, like it does improve, and and they they have actually improved the combat in Infinite Wealth significantly. I feel like they've made it. They've given you a lot more freedom with the combat in Infinite Wealth. It's still turn based, but I mean it it plays with much more freedom, and that's something that overall this game has just expanded so much upon. Uh, Yakuza in general like they have taken on so much with this game it's almost like this game is like four or five games in one like it's uh the the mini games are so in-depth that they feel like a game within itself like they have the Sujiman in this which is basically just a Pokemon copycat they have um the crazy taxi mini game in this one where you can go and make money they have you're using a bicycle and you're basically it's basically basically crazy taxi they have don doko island which is like a mixture of kind of the sims animal crossing style game and that's really addicting i actually didn't think i'd get into that but i've played a, a few hours of that now and it's quite addicting yeah addicting. i was gonna I think say I, I wouldn't cut you out to be like a sims or animal crossing kind of a person really no so. i used to be when i was younger i used to play a lot of sims and roller coaster tycoon and stuff but not so much recently yeah. I, th- I think I've played 28 hours of the game total, and I think the story in this game is probably one of the weaker y- Yakuza ones, and that's not to say it's bad, because out of the Yakuza games I've played, I think the story in all of them is absolutely incredible. Like, they're incredible storytellers. I've played Yakuza 0, Yakuza Kiwami, Judgment, Lost Judgment. Um, so I've played Judgment as well. That was insane. So the story in judgment is chaos man it's just so good yeah. uh, and then that's actually what got me into the yakuza franchise i played those games mm. and then i was like i need to check out yakuza and, and i think i, I so think tyler I had a hand in that as well like he was yeah tyler constantly. was convincing me for sure 100 <laughs> uh, percent. and then like a dragon i really loved it uh the story ichiban's just such a charming character and he's so fun and and i really like the way kiryu and ichiban bond in in infinite wealth as well uh but the the, the kiryu story in infinite wealth i don't even know man it's it's such a heartbreaker and and it's so good the way they tell that story and i also played like a dragon gaiden as well which was kind of like the build-up kiryu story to like a dragon infinite wealth um but yeah the game is incredible um it, there's so much going on i think the pacing suffers a little bit from how much they have going on in the game but overall, it is just a huge game that deserves your attention. And I highly recommend, if you haven't played Yakuza, it's probably not the best point to start, I would say. Um, but I think that if you kind of play the other ones, you need to eventually play this one as well. Now, last game I'm going to touch on before I talk about a few games that I've only played maybe one hour of is Tomb Raider 2013, the reboot. I, I'm playing this again. I have played this in the past. I played this when it came out. I kind of rushed through it when it came out. And now that I'm playing the OG classic Tomb Raiders, I kind of wanted to try the reboot again. And I I have really kind of... I didn't realize how much I missed games like this. Like the kind of yeah. action-adventure, uncharted Tomb Raider-style game. Like the set pieces are just so much fun. Um, I, I just love these type of games. Just climbing around, going down in on these crazy set pieces. The, the secret tombs are fun. Um, it's the adventure man it's it's the story yeah. surrounding such a grand adventure that's ahead of you and you uh-huh. have you know to yourself you're like i have at least like 15 20 hours ahead of me where it's just you're gonna have all these moments where your jaw drops you're i i just i i loved all those tomb raider games like they're they were fantastic the new the mo- more modern ones the reboot, like yeah, i can't yeah. wait the reboots like they were just they're so fun uh, and like I was surprised that they didn't get as much love as say the Uncharted games. I think the reason for that is like I I don't think the Tomb Raider games are as strong story wise or character wise as Uncharted, and no, that's they, definitely something else. Like he's he's a he's a magnet yeah. of a character. 
Like, and uh, and I think like the gameplay in in Tomb Raider in the 2013 in the reboot is actually like surprisingly good for the first one of the modern reboot. The gameplay I think is better than Uncharted One, Two, Three. Maybe not Four, but the gameplay yeah. like the bow, you have the the shotgun, the like you have the different weapon types, and and the gameplay is actually surprisingly fun and i i really did enjoy it a lot and and i'm enjoying playing through this i think i've played maybe six seven hours of the of the modern uh tomb raider reboot now and i'm definitely taking my time a lot more with it as well i'm kind of finding all these secrets and going through it as i would go through more uh, one of the earlier classic games where you're kind of searching for everything and uh, i think it's definitely done the game a, a lot in my favor like when i rushed through it I didn't. I wouldn't say I enjoyed it as much. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it, and I really, really want that Uncharted reboot now. Like, it's just kind of made me realize how much I, I love these games. I'm gonna play through the full reboot trilogy. I'm gonna play through, uh, Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow of the Tomb Is Raider. Is a reboot Uncharted coming? Potentially, there's a lot of rumors about that. Yeah, yeah. where you're playing as Cassie Drake. So we'll see. Um, that'll probably that be a while be off. Yeah. Because like, who knows? Hold on, I'm getting absolutely fucking. I see that. The sun. <laughs> I mean, no, this man turned no... into cast for the ghost all of a sudden. <laughs> I was there, like. <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna try and frame my uh, monitor a little bit more around this way, so yeah, I can fucking no. hide in the shadows a little bit. No worries. Jesus Christ, that was bad. That sun is blaring. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's setting. It's pissing rain and it's grey skies. So <laughs> sounds about yeah. right for Ireland. <laughs> That's every day. Let it end, please. Um, oh, no. Yeah, no. Uh, with the Uncharted games, man. Yeah, like looking back, I know when you see kind of clips from Uncharted One, even two, there you can see the kind of archaic kind of gameplay of it. Like it's it looks old. Three wasn't as bad. It was a little bit more lo- modern looking. We only finished playing four. I, that's the second, the third time that I finished playing it. Uh, played it with Rachel there recently, and she absolutely loved the characters in it. So good. Um, uh, four is my uh, favorite. Four, I think it's actually my favorite game of all time. I'm not even exaggerating. Really, when I, say, I, th- yeah, I think yeah. four is my favorite I, game. You've of all said time. this before, like, and I, I can see why. Um, just everything about the game is just it's. Uh, I just the 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 world itself, the characters are just so amazing as well. It, it, like any bit of screen time that they, any of them have, it's just perfect. Like magic uh and even when you think the game's about to end and then it goes into like you know it, it does it kind of mm-hmm. you think it's coming to the climax and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you you're i won't spoil anything like, i'm trying not yeah, to. it was it was the perfect swan song for uncharted man like they really i think was. they just did a perfect job of, of really wrapping up that franchise and that's why i'm a little bit nervous about a reboot as well because i'm like i think they finished those games so perfectly like i don't want them to come back and just have uncharted games that are okay you know, I don't want to either to come back and there's yeah. an, a new Uncharted and it's like, oh, it's 78 on Metacritic. It's an okay Uncharted game. Like, I, I we need the like we need them to have, still have that quality because I know Naughty Dog won't they be working need to on. Have it. the writers from back then, and they on. won't. That's the thing. Like, but that's that's the, yeah. that's the thing that gets me a little bit nervous. But I, I, I am interested to see what a different studio can do with an Uncharted reboot and a Cassie Drake reboot. I am, I'm curious. But it, I am nervous about it, it at the same time. If they do get like uh, Nate, Phil- uh, what's the fuck Nathan Fillion, isn't it? Uh, no, no, um, no. What is what's his Nathan name? Drake's no. voice? You mean voice Yeah, actor. sorry, Nolan that's, North. Uh, Nolan North. Yeah, yeah. Nolan he he North. reminds me of Nathan. That's why Nathan Fillion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get what um, you're saying. Because he he actually was he was cameoed in the film, wasn't he? No, North uh, was. North, North was, yeah, yeah. yeah he was. Uh, no, but when I when I seen him at first, I was like, he he even has the same kind of like look of him as well. I love uh, I said North, it, man. I remember I saying it to Rachel, and then she was like, "No, that's that's not Nathan Fillion." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah." Nathan Fillion um, did like this little fucking montage on chart for Uncharted before. Yes, he, he, he did. No, he did like a that, yeah. uh, a little feature film. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not like if they have uh, Nolan coming back as Nate and like him maybe being like a kind of same character as Sully. That, that would know, be like, cool. You know, like with Nate's own kind of pros and cons Spin that he that, has. With his, you know, but th- that that would be amazing. I'd love to see that. Yeah, um, it would be cool. I, I hope they can deliver. I hope so. We'll mm-hmm. see. Anyway, we were talking about Tomb Raider. We got it into Uncharted, but I mean, they're both great franchises, and I, yeah. 
I'm excited about the future of the Tomb Raider uh, franchise as well. It seems like they have kind of announced this new thing. So, yeah, Tomb mm-hmm. Raider will be coming coming back at some point soon, and I'm excited to see what they do with it. But for now, I'm going to enjoy the classic games. I'm going to enjoy the reboots, and it, maybe eventually I'll check out the Underworld trilogy as well. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to talk about now kind of three games that I've played maybe an hour of so far. I'm going to start with uh, Nier Automata. Have you played that game? Yeah, I, I did. I I think I finished it, but I, I only got one of the endings. There's like... Oh, 20, yeah, there's like two endings or something. 27 endings. No, 27 no. endings? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm nearly sure it goes from A to Z. I think it's 26. Oh, shit, okay. Yeah, yeah I've only played an hour now, so um, I'm not that deep into it, but I'm curious <laughs> to hear your thoughts on it because I do think it was a really cool intro. I love the way they kind of... Uh, swap between different like gameplay genres almost like they go to a top-down kind of game and then they go to a side scroller and then it turns into a third-person action game eventually as well like i love the way they kind of intermittently switch between the two of them yeah i love i I love that and uh, i think that's such a cool unique way to do a game and overall i mean the main character is just extremely attractive as well the robot or whatever like uh, that's always yeah it it doesn't (laughs) doesn't uh, not help Uh, but even the like i don't know it's just uh, when you look at those kind of games and the types of studios is Japanese studios making these kind of games, they always come out with massive hits. The likes of Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think Stellar Blade might be Japanese too. Uh, yeah. I mean, or is it yeah, Korean? I think it might be Korean. Korean. Sorry. So Asian kind of stuff. I don't know. They're just, they're not. I know what you're saying though. Yeah. These, like really wacky, but cohesive storylines and mm. not be afraid to make any characters look attractive in any way. Um, like Final Fantasy 7 for instance like nearly every character you see in that game has I saw that beach scene yeah yeah exactly (laughs) but you know (laughs) even the likes of um, Clive from 16 like he's a handsome looking dude like same with Cloud they're not afraid to make people look that way but they give them such such character they're so strong and like I don't know it's even with with 2B, it was it was a fantastical time. I'm just I'm trying to remember about the game a little bit. It's, it was so long ago, but yeah. Um, when did the game I, come out? Like 2014 or some shit? Is it 20? No, I don't, I don't think it was that long ago, was it? I look it, it up. Was, here. It was PS4, definitely. But uh, yeah, I don't know. They're they're just they're not afraid to make insane types of games or storylines. 2017, like look, sorry. Like 2017, okay. Yeah. So it's not that long ago. I should no. be able to remember a lot of it. Like <laughs> seven years. Yeah. To be fair, seven years is a long time. <laughs> 2017 long just time doesn't sound that long ago, you know? No, but it, it, it kind of is at this point. It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I like it so far. I'm definitely going to play more. I've, I've been playing it on the PlayStation Portal as well a little bit, which is uh, always handy oh, just to cool. play that in bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm excited to see more of it. Yeah, it's it's well worth giving your time to. Like, I'm sure one, I'm near sure one game of the year, or it got a shit ton of awards anyway. Like, it's it's well respected, well revered kind yeah. of a game. No, it definitely has always been well liked. I just never kind of got mm. into it back in the past. But anyway, um, let's talk about one of your games you've been playing. You've been playing the new Saints Row reboot. Kind of a lot of consternation <laughs> about that game when it came out, but. Let's, yeah. let's hear your thoughts. I'm curious to see what you actually think about the game playing it, because I've never actually played much of the Saints Row games at all, so I could go into this game no. completely lo- knowing nothing about the franchise, and I'd be curious to see what, what your thoughts are uh, about it. So far, from what I have actually played, I'd say I've maybe put... I think I'm on two to three hours in. Like the, I always found the Saints Row kind of intros really obnoxious. A lot mm. of the writing is obnoxious. But there's there's all these cool kind of like um like kind of what's the word that I'm fucking thinking of like set pieces okay. there is like but in the wacky sense not like, like a uh, Tomb Raider and Uncharted yeah <laughs> no it's it's not gonna be like damn that was cool it was like how the fuck did that make any sense <laughs> yeah but, I get what you're saying yeah. <laughs> but it's just it's done really well like with the I think I played third and the fourth of the the older saints row games not the reboot uh the reboot's the one that i'm playing now but um yeah like i don't know i just played it for the fun of it i never really play uh, look too much into the story 
of the game. Was it was it as cringy as it looked like it was going to be when it when it, it was announced? It doesn't and stuff? seem to be that bad. It's okay. so far, but like it could get worse further on into the game. Like it's, I'm really just I'm mucking about with it for the time being. I'm not right. going to be too devastated if I end up deleting it. It was part of a PS Plus, I think January or February. No, maybe oh, sorry, you got it for free. Yeah, yeah. I got it for free. It's it's worth trying. Like, you know, you're paying yeah. for these subscriptions. A lot of the time we have all these backlogs or games that we'll never touch. So I kind of said it to myself that I'm going to start kind of cherry picking ones that I wanted to try out at least. Yeah, um, fair enough. I, def- I definitely wouldn't have gone out and bought the game from mm. what people were telling me. But so far, it seems it just seems like a Saints Row game. Just just OK. Very, yeah, it's it's OK. It's a very different setting, but I never thought there were phenomenal games in the first place. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I yeah. played. I, I I don't know. There was one game that I checked out. The Saints Row was a Get Out of Hell or something, and I I thought yeah, it was fun, but yeah, I was like I, I wasn't like blown away by it or anything. So I just kind of yeah. left it. It's a bit of crack. Left like. it behind. Yeah, it's a bit of crack. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that was like a DLC, or it was like a standalone DLC, maybe. Okay, maybe yeah, yeah, something like that. yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so. Foam Stars is a game you've been playing. Have you played much of it? I played about an hour and I thought it was yeah. fun, but I mean, I'm not going to play it again. <laughs> that kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm much the same. I I think it's it's a cool competitor for the likes of Splatoon. Like it was, it's just a daft multiplayer game to play. That's yeah. it's kind of mindless, really. Fair enough. I, there, I suppose there there is the side that you can have a bit of strategy with it, but it's nothing on the level of like say Overwatch back in the day. I don't or Rainbow Six. I don't know what two is like, but yeah, Rainbow Six. It's not nothing as heavy as that. It's a bit of hop on, hop off. It, another PS Plus title. Um, I thought they were smart to do that because I don't think it would have sold very well otherwise. No, definitely not. No. And speaking of PlayStation Plus. Um, hmm. they added a new classic game that I am playing for the first time now, Resistance Retribution. Um, this game... Oh, that's uh, on the is extra, what, is it? Or the, um, I think the it's premium, on the, the premium it? tier, yes, because it's a classic yeah, game. Yeah. I think you can buy it for 15, 20 bucks, something like yeah. that. Yeah, now, yeah it's, it's in the store. I've seen it, actually. Yeah, and I will say I, I am a huge fan of the Resistance franchise in general. Um, mm-hmm. love like the first game I played on PS3 was Resistance Fall of Man. I got the bundle, the Resistance Fall of Man Man bundle on the PlayStation 3, and I absolutely loved that game. Loved that world. Loved those characters. Uh, loved the enemies, and I really just fell in love with the franchise after that as well. Resistance two and three, uh, three specifically, I thought was phenomenal. And yeah. uh, I felt like these shooters never got the love that they deserved. I never played Re- Retribution, so this is kind of my entryway back into the series now. Uh, I hope eventually they'll do like a remaster of the collection or something, because those games not being playable in their original form on PS5 is, is very disappointing. Uh, and hopefully we'll eventually get that. It's because it's such... It's I, did, I, just, it is. I love those games. They're insanely yeah. good and so yeah. unique. Like... It was pretty much like it was a it's an alien just I don't know fantasy shooter game that it had like they had to combat the likes of Halo. They had yeah. to have something and they came up with an absolute cracker of a series that they just didn't do anything else with after shame. Three. That was it. And I no. think I think to be fair, three didn't even sell that well. Um no, so I don't it's, think it's it quite did. disappointing. Like the people just didn't show up. I, I, I thought it was phenomenal personally, but yeah, it's a it's a shame. It's a shame. It is what I, it is. What it is, I suppose that these things yeah. happen. But Retribution is a little bit different. It's a third person shooter, and yeah, obviously it was made for PSP. But I, I played about an hour and a half of it, or, or an hour or something like that, and it's yeah. cool. Definitely, they it has some of the resistance charm there. Uh, the enemies, like the enemies, the locust was always like the coolest part of of resistance to me. Like it's just. Badass. Same with Killzone with the Hellgast and shit like that. I always thought that those enemies were so cool. Um, but Quick side note. Do you remember Haze? Is it Haze I do. Thing? Yes. Haze. The game with the fucking yellow mask and the yeah, crack in it. Yeah, that was the one game I really wanted to actually kick off. But when I bought it, I couldn't believe it how sucked. shit it was. It sucked. It sucked. <laughs> Haze was trash. I really wanted to like Haze, man. I wanted to love uh, Haze, but it sucked. It was such a shame. I, that was one of the games that I like. I used to collect all the like PlayStation official PlayStation magazines like back in the day. Like and on, it, it got a lot of marketing, yeah. 
it got huge amount because was it ea or was it um i think it was ea yeah i'm nearly sure it was yeah yeah but i I remember reading that and because i i think i'd finished um resistance one or something like that and i was like oh it's giving me the same vibes i'm getting from reading this and it was just a blurry mess of a game but yeah uh resistance yeah i I just i i loved everything about that game i love too as well the fact where it kind of got more into like grandiose enormous scale as well Mm. that's you know bigger monsters bigger locusts so um yeah three i i only dabbled with i actually never got to buy it um i think i'd kind of i had to sell on the playstation 3 at the time so i never really got to experience it so i hope they do come out with a remaster of some sort yeah, I hope so too. I, I would love, I'd love it. If I we did got a play this PSP game as well. Like, and it, you I, played I, it. I what did you think of Retribution? At the time on the PSP, it was great because yeah. it was a handheld, you know, 3D game that was far better than something you get from the DS in terms of visuals. I'm not going to knock any of the games on that because the DS yeah, yeah, was, of course. A, um, but Just yeah, technically. yeah. Yeah, it was. It probably wasn't worth the the price that we were paying for them back then, because I think they were full price titles, like fifty quid for like a UMD disc. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they lost their value very quickly. And only now, in recent years, you'll find that they've gone way up. Obviously, because they're vintage items now. Fair but, yeah, I think I have my PSP somewhere, but I just don't know where it is. I, I think it's somewhere around the place. But anyway. <laughs> Resistance Retribution. Hopefully the Resistance franchise will live again at some point in the future. Last game I'm going to talk about here that I've been playing is... I started today, actually, just before we started this uh, yeah. this podcast almost at this point. Um, well, Brothers, like A Tale of Two Sons, the remake. I'm playing this. I'd never played the original. And I played about an hour of it just before we started. And it's fucking cool, man. Like, I, It's not like this Same game that's going to be like... Or- director isn't it of um it joseph Farris's you... first game joseph yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. his okay, first game wow. um so i absolutely love a way out i love it takes two and i think he's just so awesome like and he has so much charm and charisma and i think he's great and the, and it shows in his games like the mini games in this are similar to what you get in it takes two now like you just yeah. walk up and and like even at the start of the game like there's this just just this part where this girl is playing with a basketball by herself. You walk up, you can play the basketball. You can, you can uh, as the big brother, you're controlling both the brothers with each analog, basically, which okay. is super cool. Like it's it's a co-op game that's designed to play solo, so it's it's an, a super interesting okay, right. concept than in general. Someone else holding the other part of the controller and like that. No, Ex- yeah, no, you can play co-op now. I believe in this new version, but it's a it's yeah. a solo. It's a co-op game designed to play by yourself on the one controller. You just kind of do it with both analog sticks kind of odd, and really isn't it like it is he's, he's great for coming up with these ideas exactly yeah. he comes up with these really yeah. unique concepts and like you can just go up and take the ball and like she passes it to you and you can basically make the shot and you get a tro- a gold trophy for that like show your little awesome. brother how it's done you can only score as the big brother and then like right, kind okay. of yeah basically as you go through the game then there's like this part where there's a dog and you have to like you can call the dog as one of the brothers he'll come over to that brother you have to run past and get up on a platform and then you call him as the other brother and then the other brother has to run and get up on the platform and like kind of just bait the dog into into uh, ignoring the one that's actually on the ground there's just super cool unique things as you go through the game i'm as i said i'm very i'm very early but i believe it's only a three four hour game in the first place it's not that long of the game i think i'm 20 percent of the way through the game already and i've only played maybe 55 minutes but i i already know i'm gonna love this game like uh, just from the hour that i've played i think it's incredible you never played the original either no, never touched it, but I think I will maybe check out this newer version of it. Like it's, it's only sixteen euro as well. So yeah, I know the price point the is very enticing. Um, I think you should not, do it just shot, yeah. from what you're saying there. It kind of reminds me of an Xbox title that kind of came out. Um, I want to say August or September last year. It was kind of set in on a like it was a side-scrolling planetary kind of adventure with these robots. You play like this little kid. And you find this little black alien kind of guy with red, just kind of light. It's it was one that Stephen was suggesting to us to play for ages. I can't fucking uh, think of the name right now. 
Um, but yeah, it was the same kind of elements. You get the little robot guy to distract the enemies. Mm. You kind of sneak up. You know, you, you kind of set yourself up for victory that way. Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, completely segueing off the fact. No, so, oh, good. Oh, it's interesting to hear that comparison. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, if I had the, the title of the game, I'd, I'd be able to fucking explain it a little bit. <laughs> All good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, unless you have any other games you have been playing that you want to discuss... Um, uh, I suppose I've I've been delving back into dreams. Dreams, um, okay. Yeah, it's it's a game that I feel that didn't get enough love, and I think there's a lot of amazing creators on there. St- uh, you, is there still people on there creating stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To this day, there's there's still content getting generated. Um, I don't know if you know about the back rooms. If you've heard about that kind of concept. Mm-mm. No, okay. Well, your audience might kind of know a little bit more, but it's like a, a luminal space. I think it's like a gap between realities. Um, it's it's like you, if you can imagine, you kind of no clip. You know what no clipping is? No. No. Okay. All right. Well, in a game, when you no clip, you can go through boundaries or through a wall. Okay. So yeah. Okay. It's based off that kind of an idea, but uh, there's a huge lore uh, and story behind this where I, I i can't it's there is youtube videos based on it it's these guys going around in like hazmat suits and they're trying to figure out what's going on in this very odd dimensional space and this is a game in dreams that you're talking about so yeah there's a creator that's made a game based off this in dreams and it's <laughs> from what i've played so far i'm like there's a lot of work been put into this I think they've only released maybe one or two chapters at the moment but they, they have plans for dropping the whole game on that Cool. um there's even like a sonic uh frontier kind of a game somebody made even though there is a, a sonic frontier game but they've made their own version in dreams anything you can think of i was playing croc do you remember croc legend of um fuck what's it called it was a ps1 title you played as a little green uh crocodile mm-hmm. with a backpack um i got to relive that and it was it was insane. Like oh, there's so many like dedicated hardworking people on the site, and I I feel like people should give it a bit more of a go. Yeah, they they dropped the ball on the marketing. I I yeah. think they should have pushed. They should have released it day and date on PC as well. I think, or at least brought it to PC. They had it on PC. Jesus Christ! I think uh, yeah. you can only imagine. Like, I think that would be incredible. If they had it for free, as well, like because I think yeah. I paid twenty quid um, to get it. I think it was it was cheap, but I still think it, you've you would have drawn everyone in True. just to at least try it. Yeah, you know? True. But I think shame. that's yeah. It's that's pretty much all that I played. I suppose I, I delved into Roller Dome as well. Roller Dome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I played a little Drum. bit of it back yeah, in the day, yeah. but I never really got fully into it. I played maybe like an hour or something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the concept is cool though. Tough. It's fucking. It's a hard game. Yes. Yeah. Like I think I got into the third or fourth level and I know <laughs> Rachel was beside me, you know, commenting about it and she's like, This this actually seems like a really cool game. It's interesting. Yeah, the watch. concept is really cool. Yeah. Um, but there was me like absolutely sweating buckets just to try and pretend like I'm I'm doing all right. Like <laughs> the difficulty isn't absolutely kicking my ass. And I don't think I even I don't even know if there's a difficulty slider in the game. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but like it's, I only it's did like level one or something. Or <laughs> some shit, I don't know. Yeah, but like I, I should be dropping it if that's the case. But I was getting my ass handed to me on a silver platter. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's but funny. yeah, that's that's been about the height of it. I've been dabbling in Street Fighter a bit of. Oh uh, yeah, you're getting back into fighting games. You were saying a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a bit of Grand Blue as well, but uh, not I'm Grand Blue like, Fantasy Reeling. Grand Blue Rising. Rising, yes, yeah, yeah. But Just that's for anyone that's who was wondering. <laughs> It's it's only got four characters. I'm tempted to buy it, but I think I'm gonna let it drop. Um, it didn't take long for it to come onto PS Plus as a monthly game, so I'm not that I'm hoping for that this time. But I, I probably will purchase it if it gets to about twenty quid. It's it's those type of games I love. Uh, there was a Dragon Ball Z game made by the same company, um, not so long ago. I can't even remember the name of it. I'm getting terrible for names. Whoa. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> no fair enough yeah uh yeah but yeah it's it's definitely one that we'll keep an eye out for price wise nice one well 
Uh, I've never been into fighting games myself, so I can't uh, say too much about that. But uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, Mac, thank you for joining us, you little fucking duck. That's fine. He's very mature, this guy, right? Let's give Mac a round of applause, guys. He kept it together for an hour and 40 minutes. What a man. That was like almost a full podcast episode. We'll, ca we'll call this the, the Apex Prime Podcast, episode number one. We're here every, each and every week, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, guys, maybe once a month. We'll see. With Max timing, you know how, how once a month. that was. Um, I've been about 10 years out of the game. It was fine. That you did great, man. You did absolutely wonderful, and we applaud you. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. We'll see you guys. We'll, we'll try and do this one, one of these for March as well. Um, maybe bi-weekly to keep the, the time down, but I don't mind going long. But thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Pre wow. I, I don't mind going long. Pause, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to do it, but yeah. No. <laughs> I was, I was going to say pause, but I said, no, I'll leave you. <laughs> All right, Mac, any closing comments? Uh, this is never happening again. Don't listen to him. Um, he's a fraud, just like Jack Septic guy. <laughs> no, um, we'll see yeah, you April gonna... 1st.